between myself and my daughter even before she was born and she recognized that song and you know God loves each and every one of you that way and uh, you have all these things personality feelings and such things and the, in fact God, God's love is even deeper and earlier than that and Jeremiah says now the word of the Lord came to me saying before I formed you in the womb I knew you Jeremiah before I formed you in the womb even that deep is his love for us. Even before the foundation of the world, he knew us, it says in Ephesians chapter 1. Paul says, he set me apart before I was born, in Galatians chapter 1. So, the value of human life, in God's eyes, is so precious, and it extends to us at every age, from, from our conception, and even before our conception, he's loved us. Yes, you lay your hand upon me, God, says David, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's high, I cannot attain it. Amen? Alright, so now we need to ask the next question though, or say this. What can we say then about abortion? Well, it becomes very simple, clear, after what we've said so far, I think. For according to God, it's not tissue. It's not just a clump of cells. It is a person, with a personality, with expression, with feelings, with a spirit, with a personality, and holy, and the work of the Creator. We don't want to go into God's art room and dash the clay off of this spinning wheel, for He's in love with it and in a relationship. What therefore is abortion? Well, for those of you who know me, do you know me to be a politically correct man? No. Okay, thank you. I'm not politically correct. Let me tell you this, because this is the truth, straight and clear. Abortion is wrong. Amen. It is a sin, and it is murder. Amen, because you're taking the life of a child. It's wrong, and we all know what it says in Exodus 20, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. Now, I wrote a paper on this when I was at the ELCA seminary for a year, uh, and I wrote pretty much what I'm talking with you about you now on abortion. I got the paper back from the liberal seminary professor, and on the top of it was written, Greg, good paper, well argued, convincing arguments, backed up with scripture, but you didn't allow for any other viewpoints. Or that such as abortion is okay and fine. To which I basically answered, I gave no other viewpoint because there is no other Viewpoint. <laughs> what I'm preaching to you today, friends, is not my view. Amen. It's God's view. Amen. And therefore, there's no other way to see this. And if you call yourself a Christian and you don't agree with me, you need to repent. And you need to believe what God is saying about how precious He loves each and every human being. Because, friends, we are, we are people of life. We serve a living God, not a dead God. And he wants us to promote life and not to promote death. And this even says it in the Old Testament. We read in Exodus 21, when two men strive together, fighting, and they hit a pregnant woman, so that her child or children come out, but there's no harm to the children, the one who hit her shall surely be fine, as the woman's husband shall impose on him, and he shall pay the judges as they determine. That is, if the child lives. But if the two are fighting, if there is harm, then you shall be life for life, eye for eye, truth for truth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, burn, wound for wound, strike for strike. In other words, in the Old Testament, if you kill the, the life inside of a pregnant woman, unwittingly, not meaning it, you still die. How much more is deserved then by the one who takes the life of a child willingly. But then you might say, well, hang on, Pastor, back up, pulls horses, rein them in. What about, are there any exceptions? What about for rape or incest? Now, I want to acknowledge before you that is a horrible and a terrible thing. I mean, no women have to go through it, although they do. Is it okay to abortion in that case? 
To which I say, no. Because why would you compound a sin with murder? I mean, before God, this woman, as horrible as what's happened to her, she's innocent. And God's going to pour down his mercy to help her. Why would you then make her a criminal, a murderer, and, and visit God's wrath upon her for this very thing? The only case in which I could see the possibility of, of, of it being okay would be in the case of basically the mother is 100% sure to die if her child is not taken. And even then, I would have to uh, pass it over to a trustworthy pastor. I'd certainly be happy to talk to you about that. Um, but that could be the only case in which I could conceive of being even possibly permissible. How ironic then that our country, just a couple weeks ago, were weeping bitterly for the children in Connecticut, which we should be, uh, but then we have 3,500 killed a day, 146 an hour, one every 25 seconds, and nobody says anything. Nobody cares. How ironic that we can go over to the beach here and kill, you know, uh, sea turtle eggs, and you're fined $100,000 with a year in jail if you hurt a sea turtle. But if you do the same thing to a human person being formed in the womb, you get off scot-free. Pretty ironic, don't you think? <laughs> Yet I ask, is that really scot-free? Does a person really get off so well? Illegally, yes. In our country, since 73, you can do it. Emotionally and spiritually, I'd say no. Because uh, I actually, as you know, run a charter for sailboat. I had a couple on last week. The guy was an evangelical pastor. His wife worked for, uh, for Iowa Right to Life. And she told me out there they have a new kind of abortion where you can just do it by webcam. <laughs> In other words, you can talk to a doctor over the internet, never consult with him face to face, and he will then send you a pill to have your abortion at home. And she says it's been really troubling because she said woman, women came in there she has to minister to. She says it's not pretty. You know, it's very messy at home, very bloody, very painful. And then they have to see their child. And the doctor's advice is flush it down the toilet. Because there's a lot of money in this. Planned Parenthood is making up to a billion dollars a year for abortions. But the woman then doesn't know what to do. She doesn't want to flush it down the toilet because she sees it's got little hands, little fingers, little, little feet, and a beautiful little angelic face. And so somehow she said, have uh, one lady kept it in her freezer, didn't know what to do. The other one actually went out to a hill and had a ceremony to bury it because she realized only then this is a child. And that's if a woman sees it. But there's also scarring if a woman doesn't see this. I knew a woman a couple of years ago when I was in seminary. I was doing a little small group, and this woman was a new ager from another you know, religion, but she'd had an abortion. She went to this uh, meditation clinic for all peace, love, and happiness to try to feel peace, love, and happy. She says, why can't I feel peaceful? Well, she was in a meditation, and she was deep in a meditation, and she heard this. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And she said, I, it, it, it troubled me. I didn't know what it was. And then it got louder. Whoosh, whoosh. Whoosh, and then louder, whoosh, 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 until it finally broke onto her mind and she burst into tears and says, it was, the, it was the vacuum machine that killed my baby in my abortion. I killed my baby, I killed my baby, I killed my baby. And she wept right there. I saw it with my own eyes, bawling and crying in tears because she was duped. She bought into a lie. She didn't really understand. She didn't know what she was doing. And Jesus says of the devil, he was a murderer from the beginning, and he has nothing to do with the truth. When he lies, he speaks according to his native tongue. For he is a liar and the father of lies. And I'll tell you, there's a lie being perpetrated all across our country that this won't harm you at all. That there are no problems with it. That's a lie, and I call it to its face. And the truth is that God loves each and every one of us. Each and every child. And, uh, and if there is pain and sorrow for a woman or a man when their child is aborted, what about God? Do you not know, says Paul, that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and that temple you are. So there is a judgment to come. But now I want to ask him, switch gears, the gospel. Final question. Is there grace for those who have abortions? from God? Is there forgiveness? 
God says this in the Bible, and I pray you take it to heart. He says, Isaiah 49, But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. And God says, in answer, Can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should no more have compassion on the fruit of her womb? Yes, even these may, be, may forget, yet I will not forget you. Behold, I've graven you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. Is there grace for women and men who have done this? Answer, categorically, definitely, absolutely, yes. There is forgiveness. There is healing. Because we serve a gracious and a loving God who cares for each and every person. God says in Isaiah, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Come on. Though your sins are like scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. I can take your bloody hands and make them white again. And how with my son's own blood? That's why I sent him. The world, if you want to think of it this way, actually aborted Christ, right? God's son. Peter says, You killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. And now, brethren, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. And a lot of women act in ignorance, and men. But what God foretold by the mouth of the prophets, that as Christ should suffer, thus he fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Say with that. Say that with me. Times of refreshing. Times of refreshing. Do you believe in times of refreshing? Yes. Amen. For this and every other sin, God wants to give it. He loves you. And if you have ever been involved with this, or you know someone who's been involved in this, or let's say you have some other sin unrelated to this, I want you to know there are times of refreshing from the Lord and healing and grace. Jesus says, I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men, except the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Every sin, this sin included. So a woman or a man may not want to ask forgiveness on this, may not feel worthy of it, but God calls and says, come one, come all anyway, I will forgive you, I'll heal you my son, I'll set you right, and I will bring things good again. <clears throat> Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near, let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him, to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Say abundantly pardon, please. Abundantly pardon. Yeah, isn't that great? Isn't that great? Is it, I, I mean, I have sinned in other ways, and to know that I have a loving God. So what I want you to get out of the sermon today is this. Number one, that you are precious in God's sight. He knows everything about you. He cares for you. He knew you before. He knew you then. He knows you now. He'll know you forever. He'll carry you. You're precious. He loves you. Secondly, that no matter what sin you've committed, Jesus forgives when you turn to him. And he will heal you and cleanse you and make you white. And thirdly, that we're to do something with this knowledge. And I'm going to tell you after the service exactly how we can do that this week. But for now, just know this. Jesus says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Pray rightly. Talk to your children, your daughters, your granddaughters, your grandchildren, and know that we serve a God of life, a living God. And we are people of life, of eternal life, and he wants us to promote what is life. And I conclude with this. God says to you right now, through me, personally to you, hearken to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnants of the house of Israel, who've been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb, even to old age, I am he. And to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear you. I will carry you, and I will save you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.